Hello everyone, and welcome to a special bonus episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. Now, we've already beaten the game, but there are still some extra things we can do. In fact, these uh, optional things that we can do are so tough and so challenging that I saved them for the very end, because if we could complete these optional objectives, there was no doubt that we could handle the final boss of the game. We're over by Midgar, right by the town of Kalm. This is the first town we can visit when we get out of Midgar. Now, people have new things to say. Hey, listen to me. I heard the barrier protecting Sethroth is gone. But with Rufus dead, the Shinra troops don't know what to do. Hedegear and Scarlet don't have what it takes to lead the troops. I really thought something was finally going to get done. But then, everything's the same. Not a damn thing's changed. Well, Hedegear and Scarlet are kind of dead. They blew up in their robot. We're here because there's a dude we want to find. I think he's in here. There he is. The world's changed a lot in the past few days. That huge monster meteor was covering up the sky and acting like he owned it or something. A lot of my friends have died. I'm going on a journey to pray for their souls. A map that sunk along with a ship. Guidebook. A rose that blooms once every thousand years in the desert. Desert Rose, a harp that soothes those who hear it, Earth Harp. I wonder if there's anyone who'll bring it to me. So this guy is looking for those three items, and our job at this point is going to collect them because he has special rewards for us if we can. Now we've already got the guidebook, we got that way back when we were in the underwater reactor and morphed one of the ghost ships. We could give that to him now, but we're going to save it for a little later. So where are the Desert Rose and the Earth Heart? Well, for this video, we're going to go and get the Desert Rose. The only thing we know about the Desert Rose is that it only blooms every thousand years in the desert. Well, we happen to know where there's a big desert. So we're going to fly ourselves over towards the Golden Saucer. There we go. And you see, there's this weird looking little red thing sticking out of the ground over here. We can reach that red thing with our airship, but we could also reach it with a chocobo if we had one. So we're just going to fly our ship into it. Hmm. Some sort of blast of energy sends us flying back. And a weapon pops up out of the ground. Now it's boss fight time. This is the Ruby Weapon. This is one of the optional bosses that you can fight in Final Fantasy VII. And this guy is no joke. Even our barrier upbeat is really hard. And you can see right now, he's taking no damage. Because he's a jerk. And he's about to do something horrible. That Whirl Sand ability just removed one of our characters from the fight altogether. Now Cloud is not around to help whatsoever. Now he's going to do it to another character. This time he took Barrett. Couldn't sense him. So we got no idea how many hit points, MP, any strengths or weaknesses he has. Now he's going to do something also kind of aggravating. He's putting his tentacles down to the ground, so now we're in a pincer attack. He's in front of us, and the tentacles are behind us. Now he just blew a bunch of fire at us. Yuffie's ready for her limit break. But now that he has his hands in the ground and his tentacle behind us, he can be damaged. Mm. 
You see, he took practically no damage from that attack. That's because his defenses are ridiculously high. Now, part of the reason I'm using Yuffie is because her weapon, the Conforma, is more powerful the higher the level the enemy is. And even her Limit Brick did very little damage. So, the best thing to do is to hit him with things that ignore defenses, like, say, Pandora's Box. Pandora's Box is a special enemy skill that we got in the North Crater. You see, that actually did some worthwhile damage. But now his tentacles are attacking. The tentacles do damage, uh, sort of like gravity attacks. They either do a s percentage of your health or a percentage of your MP. They'll never kill you, but they will hurt you. Now, since I'm just going to show you, Ruby Weapon is actually healed by fire attacks. So, we just can't throw fire at her. You see how much damage that just did? That was pretty much enough to knock us out. And with his Ruby Ray, that's going to be the end of this fight. Game over. So that's how the game would more or less normally like you to fight Ruby Weapon. But now that we've had a chance to, to fight him a little bit, we've got a better idea of how to deal with him. And I also know a couple of tricks that we're going to use before we go to fight him. Okay, we're back at Calum. We just got beat up by the Ruby Weapon. Now that we've fought him and we have an idea of what he's like, we can make some adjustments to better prepare ourselves. Uh, a minor thing we know is that he uses fire attacks and he's immune to fire himself. So it's not worthwhile having any fire-based materia on us. At the moment, we don't have any. But we can change our equipment around a little bit. If we put the fire armlets on us, we will absorb his fire attacks and they will heal us instead of harming us. They also have pretty good defense, so they'll help us deal with some of his attacks. The other thing is we can switch around our material a bit. Now, I've more or less got the material set up the way I would like it, but we're going to do a little something to help us out. We're going to add... HP Absorb to Knights of the Round. The Knights of the Round is real powerful. And we're going to be using it a lot. And this way, we'll absorb a little bit of HP each time we fight him. Or each time it hits him. So, let's fly back over to where he is. is in a different spot now. But we're not going to go straight to fight him. We're going to land. And we're going to try to get into a fight beforehand. We want to get into a fight beforehand because we're going to take the time to knock out two of our party members. We're going to knock out Barrett and Yuffie, because Cloud has equipped to him the, the Summon Materia Phoenix. I guess you can't hurt yourself. Let Cloud do it.
Now we're just gonna quickly kill these enemies. Anything should do it, really. jump back into our ship. Ruby weapon has moved again, and we're going to fly right into him. So, from the first time we caught him, you saw that we couldn't hurt him until he put his hands in the ground and popped out his tentacles. Since our party members are unconscious, He's just going to do that right off the bat. And we're going to start by summoning the Phoenix. Phoenix is a fire summon, so we're going to use it on his tentacles instead of him. Cloud happens to have W summon, so we'll also summon Hades while we're at it. You may have noticed when we were playing last time that Hades will stop him which is very useful. Phoenix brings our party members back to life. Hades stops Ruby Weapon for a little bit, so we can start throwing up our defenses. Even his tentacles will not attack while he's stopped. Now, like I showed you before, things like, say, Pandora's Box will work good on him. Strong Summons will also do good damage to him. And we're going to summon Knights of the Round, but we're going to give that a second. We'll also throw some money at him. It's also not worth taking the time to attack his tentacles, because even if we do kill them, they'll eventually pop up new ones. We also don't want to wait too long. Alright, he is moving again. So we're going to summon Knights of the Round. In fact, we'll summon them twice. You see, each swing from Knights of the Round is doing that, well, almost maximum damage. And this sucker has a lot of HP. But now, even though we use W Summon, Ruby Weapon is countering by casting Ultimate. In fact, most of the time, 
he will counter really strong attacks with the use of ultimate, which is why it's really useful to have him stopped. Now, his next casting ultima probably won't kill us, but I'm going to use a Mega Elixir to get our strength up. So we now know that he will counterattack with Ultima whenever we use a really strong uh, attack. So we got a couple of ways to deal with that. One is we could just try to, you know, stomach as much of the damage as we can. We could try to uh, reduce all of his MP so we can't cast it anymore. But I find it to be a bit better to just keep him stunned. If he's not moving, he can't counterattack with Ultima, and his tentacles can't damage us. So let's get Barret back to life. We'll keep him stopped with Hades. And we'll just keep pounding on him. No, not on Cloud. He is stunned. We're just gonna pound him over and over again with double castings of Nice Little. Life. And we're gonna have our party members mine it. So that way they can perform it as well without having to incur any MP costs. And while he's stunned, he will not count for it. stunned anymore, so he's going to start hitting us with Ultima. Now, I had enough sense to think ahead. Cloud has the Phoenix Materia set to final attack. So if Cloud gets knocked unconscious, and this next casting of Ultima will knock him unconscious, he will cast Phoenix, which will automatically resurrect him and the party. Unfortunately, the fire damage will heal Ruby Weapon a little bit, but it won't make much of a difference. Also, don't spend too much time just uh, playing around with Ruby Weapon, because even while he has his tentacles in the ground, he will eventually do the World Sand attacks again, and you will lose party members. Cloud and Yuffie, but Barrett is still alive, so Barrett will probably get another chance to cast uh, Knights of the Round.
you want to make yourself even more safe, you could do W Summon Hades Knights of the Round, so you'll always keep him uh, stuck. But it will take a little longer as a result. Well, what do you know? We got him beat. Good job, team. And we get a huge chunk of XP, as well as AP. But as you can see, I've already got most of my guys up to their max level. That happened because I spent a lot of time training in the Northern Cave to power up all my material. And there we go, we found the Desert Rose. So, we've defeated one of the optional bosses of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, we had, to, we had to cheese it out a little bit. We had to sit there stopping it over and over again and then pounding away on it with Knights of the Round. But as, at least as far as time goes, that's one of the more effective ways to do it. There is another trick. If you can get your character's HP to be exactly 7,777, you can perform an attack called Lucky 777. That will do incredible amounts of damage to an enemy, which is great for an optional enemy like Ruby Weapon. You can pull it off by switching around Materia until you get that many uh, HP, but that worked out pretty well for us. So let's give this guy the Desert Rose. Oh, it's the Guidebook. Want to trade it for this underwater Materia? Well, right now we're going to say no, because we're going to save that for another video. I don't know. Okay, so it seems to even offer this guy the Desert Rose, I had to first give him the guidebook. So I did that off screen, and now we're going to give him the rose. Oh, it's Desert Rose. Want to trade it for that chocobo over there? How about it? He's going to give us a chocobo for the rose. Well, I think we have room for an extra chocobo. Let's trade. Okay then, it's a done deal. And that's not just any regular old chocobo. It's a chocobo, take it, it's yours. Let's go say hello to our new chocobo. This is actually a second rolled chocobo. Well, it's a second for us because we've already made one. We're gonna call you Golden. So if we didn't breed our own gold chocobo, we can get a gold chocobo this way. Alright, Golden, take care of yourself. And we can treat it like any other chocobo. We can feed it, we can race with it, we can breed with it. But that is all that we have for this special episode of Final Fantasy VII. When we get together next time, I'll show you the next optional thing that we can do. See you in the next video.